गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स इट गिवस मी एम एस प्लेजर टू बी हियर अगेन फॉर माय लेक्चर ऑन द कोर्स एयरक्राफ्ट सिस्टम्स टुडे आई एम इन लेक्चर नंबर सेवन द टॉपिक ऑफ टुडेज लेक्चर इज स्पेसिफिकेशन ऑफ रिक्वायरमेंट्स मिशन एंड परफॉर्मेंस दिस इज माय टॉपिक एंड you know as my name is dr y d divedi professor from institute of aeronautical engineering hyderabad india as of now i have completed my six lectures and this is my the last lecture of this module number 1 by this lecture i am going to complete my unit 1 before that i have already completed my all the verticals four verticals and in this also i will just revision of the module one i will try to re revise the total module of this one so that you will be again refreshed what the topics have been covered then specification requirements and then mission system these are my topics of the day for today revision we have done with the in introduction of airframe structural vehicle system and our previous classes and in airframe structure we have seen this structural system in this wing empennage and the fuselage so here i am showing you the wing so wing is the main component of the aircraft which is used for the production of the lift the primary purpose of the wing is to produce lift okay but we use the secondary as a fuel storage 80% of the fuel is stored inside the wing here i am going to show you some very very important parts of the wing this you can see i am starting from here it is the center wing exterior plate doubler here leading gear landing gear fitting the landing gears are fixed here trailing edge then inboard flap this is the inboard flap flap vane here is a spoiler it is used to spoil the lift and increase the drag in board aileron outboard flap flap vane and outboard aileron so we here we have the outboard aileron and in board aileron outboard flap and in board flap okay so if any one is failed another can work that is the purpose of this if you see here this wing lot of space is vacant this space inside this space we are fixing the fuel tanks and fuel is stored inside this between this so he, here is the ribs these parts are the ribs and here this parts are horizontal in this direction it is spar these are the spars and these are the ribs if you see this section part slat track front spar it is showing here slat track here rear spar is here Of these are the two spar and they are fixed in the aircraft keel. Here is the spoiler. Here is the flap vane. Flap will move from here to here, and this is the flap. Okay, so here it is shown a sectional view of the wing. Now I will discuss about the empennage and the fuselage because we know that the structure system has the main three parts. One is the wing. second is the empennage third is the fuselage so in, in if you see the empennage we have here uh, calm air 880 and here it is a horizontal stabilizer and this is the vertical stabilizer in this we have the here we have the rudder this is the rudder and here we have the elevator so he, this is called the dorsal fin this vertical stabilizer this part is called the dorsal fin here this part it is not a straight it has given some curve so this curve is called the dorsal fin it has got a very good effect on the aircraft stability of the control here is the center spar leading edge leading edge it is a fin tip here you have the inspector inspection door here rudder trim tab here rudder flight tab hinge should 
shroud door rudders if you see in this stabilizer pivot point elevator flight tab dynamic balance boom stabilizer trim screw jack and these all things are used if you see this is the fuselage part fuselage part you can divide into four section forward section mid section aft section and after body section in forward section we have the cockpit and here and is uh, some part of this thing then we have the mid section in the mid section we have the total fuselage where passengers are accommodated and here the wing is installed at the fairing and here keelson this is the keelson a tot strongest point where every load is transferred in this aft section here we have the aft pressure bulkhead and here fuselage after body here we have the impenis your horizontal tail and vertical tail are fixed here we have the frame then we have the longerons and we have the stringers it is fixed like that so these are the parts of the fuselage i will further this revise about the flight control here if you see the flight control system and propulsion system here we have the these are the ailerons they are the elevators this is the rudder okay so here is the handle and it is shown here this you can see if you want rudder you have to apply the leg okay if you want yaw you have to apply the your legs left and the right if you want roll and roll and pitch you have to apply this stick we have the propulsion system we have the different uh, here the piston engine here piston engines in olden days these things were used this much big but nowadays we don't use this much big we use very small engines nowadays only for the small aircraft but for the bigger aircraft we use the turbo engine turbo engines are more efficient and it is most worthy with less weight so power to weight ratio is very high for the piston in, for the uh, turbo engine so we use the turbo engine if you talk about the propulsion and other uses we have uh, anti icing systems ics and the cooling bleed air engines auxiliary power unit pressurization and all so these your engines are also not used only for the propulsion engines are used for the following purposes what are this anti icing how this anti icing is happening and why we want to do the anti icing if aircraft is flying there are some air sensors these air sensors are taking the air from the atmosphere if the atmosphere is very cool air co consist of the water and this water will become ice so all this air sensors are to be heated this heating is done by the help of the heat taken from the engine and it is blown inside the sensors then ecs and the cooling engine control system and the cooling system okay then auxiliary power unit and it is also used for the pressurization of the cabin if the pressurization is not done the pilot and the crew or the passenger who are the traveling they will not be the comfortable every human need a some specified pressure and a specified temperature to have a nice and comfortable journey if the pressure is very low or very high both are not good plus minus 10% a human can sustain but if it is going beyond that your ear your eyes your brain will not function properly and it will be very dangerous for the human being so it is very much imperative that aircraft cabin aircraft fuselage has to be precise and also it is structural issues are also there if structure will collapse if the pressure is not properly maintained so here we have the avionic system in avionic system we will have the navigation control system display system and communication system these things i have explained by the previous classes so 
in a avionic system i have just in my just previous class i have discussed about this avionic systems and the navigation in this altitude oh, oh, what is the purpose of this avionic system it is altitude measurement speed heading heading earth related coordinate position and flight legs these all things are measured and aircrafts are how it is measured it is measured by the two system this you can see here that magnetic and the radio magnetic bearing and then barometric measures from the sea level radar altitude measures from the earth level it will transmit the frequency and it will from earth it will go back again and aircraft will measure how much distance it is there it can also measure the indicated air speed or the mach number of the aircraft magnetic north true north wind speed vectors these all things i will be explaining in my uh, the another unit i think unit number 3 uh, this will come full detail in that how it is working and what is the principle of each and every equipment here i am just giving you introduction only there is these all items are there in the aircraft how it is working how it is operated this all things i will be explaining in detail in my the uh, respective module only so here this magnetic north true north and how much it is deviation is there <coughs> this will give you the west direction bearing true it is a true bearing okay so like this so here you see the drift angle aircraft okay has to move from here to here if the wind is in this direction aircraft will drift this much distance it will disturb and this is called the drift angle drift angle i shown here in this in this diagram it is very much clearly shown that you supposed to reach here but you reached here due to this wind speed and its direction the direction of the wind and the speed of the wind is very very important if the wind is very high your drift angle will be very high pilot has to correct as per the drift the computer will inform you that how much drift is going to happen nowadays autopilots are there computer will directly guide the autopilot and autopilot will take the corrective action okay so uh, for the navigation also we have the ground based navigation aids air data inertial navigation global navigation and satellite we have the for the ground based navigation we have the uh, very high frequency omni range and distance measuring uh, equipments beacons along with non directional beacon this non directional beacon if you can see on the uh, airport in the one end of the runway one zebra building a one room with zebra marking is so many antennas on top of that that is the ndb so here i am talking about the navigation system of the aircraft it is a part of the avionics system and in this we have the dme distance measuring equipment and we have the ndb1 ndb2 here is the aircraft and from here aircraft it is measuring this distances and it is proceeding ahead with the reference to vor1 vor2 vor3 and here we have the inertial navigation system in this the gyroscopic accelerometer and other things are used to do these things next we have the global positioning system in this we have global positioning system glonass and here we have number of uh, satellites and these satellites 1 2 3 4 and all with respect to each satellite uh, our aircraft is flying and it is by this aircraft is able to track its uh, line of action and uh, speed and other parameters it is able to find out so now i am talking about the mission system and topics are in the next slide so in this we can see that caution and warning system 
then digital maps this display processor fuel management system instrument control panel and modules mission computer throttle controls these are the avionics which is used for the mission control system after that we have the enhanced envelope gun sight for the weapon control system integrated flight and the fire control system store management computer weapon pylon station and unit in mission we have the sensors and in the sensors we have air data system magnetic sensing data system inertial sensing integrated systems and the radar system now this is the uh, topic which is related to this new topic a definition of the mission profile of aircraft design a mission profile is a detailed description of an aircraft flight path and its in flight activities it is a vital aspect of the conceptual design of an aircraft mission system what is the mission system used for the military aircraft the military aircrafts require a range of sensors and computing enables prosecute designed mission the mission system gains information about the outside world from active and the passive sensor and process this information to from intelligent now the fo uh, following are the major systems of the mission that is attack or the surveillance so attack or the surveillance radar to provide information on hostile and friendly target the friend and foe who are the friend and who are the enemies hostile this attack or surveillance system is radar is providing this information electro optical sensors to provide a passive surveillance of targets electronic support measurement to provide emitter information range and bearing of hostile transmitter in military telecommunication that terms electronic support or electronic support measures describes the division of electronic warfare involving action taken under direct control of an operational commander to detect inter intercept identify locate record and or analyze source of radiated electromagnetic energy for the purpose of immediate threat recognition such as a warning that fire control radar has logged on a combat vehicle ship or aircraft or longer term operational plan so the, <clears throat> magnetic anomaly detector it is also called the mad so these are the equipments which are used in the military aircrafts so this magnetic anomaly detector to confirm the presence of large metallic objects under the sea surface that is the submarine prior to attack and instruments used to detect minute variation in the earth magnetic field the term refers especially to magnet magnetometer used by military forces to detect the submarine military mad equipment is a descent of geometrical survey instrument used to search for minerals by detecting their disturbances of the normal earth field a defensive aid system or das is a military aircraft system which defend it from attack by surface to surface missile air to air missile and guided anti aircraft artillery so this is the defensive aid system is a military aircraft system which defend it from attack by surface to surface air to air missile or by the guided anti aircraft artillery system a dash typically comprises saf flares and electronic countermeasures combined with radar warning received to detect threats so dash is it will cue the flares so the missile which is coming near to you it will it will get confused on some modern aircraft the entire system is integrated and computer controlled allowing an aircraft to autonomously detect uh, classify and act in optimal manner against a potential threat to its safety next is the helmet mounted display and the data link 
helmet mounted display to provide primary flight information and weapon information to the crew whilst allowing freedom of movement of the head. Data link to provide transmission and receipt of messages under secure communication using data rather than voice. So it is now acoustic sensors to provide a means of detecting and tracking the passage of underwater object, mission computing to collate the sensor information and to provide a fused data picture to the cockpit on mission crew station, defensive aid to provide a means of detecting missile attack and deploying counter measures. Okay, so in this I have acoustic sensors. These are the actually the sensors which provides the uh, sound waves by, by the help of these sound waves these sensors will sense the sound and to provide a means of detecting and tracking the passage of underwater object like submarine. Especially for the naval purpose, the submarine is a more dangerous, very dangerous weapon. The submarines are traveling very high deep in the sea and they can fire from their missile, underwater missile, or they can even they can uh, fire the anti-continental ICBM, intercontinental ballistic missile. By that, it can go to 5,000, 5,000, 10,000 kilometer. It can hit anywhere in, on the earth. So, aquatic sensors are used to detect and tracking the passes of underwater object like your submarine. So, how to detect the submarine? It is by the aquatic sensors, not by the radio frequency. Radio frequency will not work in the underwater system. So, mission computing, it is collate the sensor information and to provide a fused data picture to the cockpit or the mission crew stations and defensive aids to provide a means for detecting missile attack and other systems. So in my next class, I am going to discuss about module 2. I have completed now module 1 and in this I have given only introduction of different types of systems but in module 2 I will be specifically discussing about electrical systems, air conditioning and pressurization system and this will be very useful for the all the students which are taking part in aircraft system course. You know that in our house we have the electrical system which is 220 volts, 50 hertz, but in aircraft we don't have 220 volts, we have 110 volts and 400 hertz. So why we have this much hertz, very high hertz but low voltage? Because if you have the more number of frequency, the smoothness of the air alternating current will be very good. So the electrical and air electrical systems of the aircraft is totally different than the any commercial system of the industry or any other places or the household. Same way in air conditioning, we use the air conditioning only we are using air as a refrigerant because we don't want very, very low temperature because the aircraft when it is moving at a high altitude, it is already cold. So we don't want that much high cooling and pressurization is really very much essential. So this precisation systems will be also discussed in, in the, uh, the coming uh, module. References I have taken from the book which is reference book for this course, Moir I and the Sea Bridge, Aircraft Systems, Mechanical, Electrical and Avionic Systems, Professional Engineering Publishing Limited London and Burnley St. Edmunds, UK, ISBN 1860582893 of 2001. Another book which is from the Moir and the Seabirds, Design and Development of Aircraft Systems and Introduction, AIA Education Series, AIAA 2004. These two books I am referring, please refer uh, 
these books these are available in our library also so you are welcome to go to the library and get the books any questions you are welcome to ask me uh, in my email my email is here y d e w i b e d i i at the rate g mail dot com this is my email in my email you can whatsapp if any query you are welcome to us okay so thank you very much for joining this class hope you will be again tuning up for my next class module 2 lecture number 8 which will be on the electrical system thank you very much for joining the class like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates